Okay, so going through this scene now, you can see that there are a few more tracking points. Uh, we've got a total of 12 now. Uh, now the, uh, the tracking points that I've added, uh, most of them are uh, over in this area here. They're off this wall. And this is important because um, if all of the tracking data was um, uh, on this wall, it would all be in this flat plane, which means that the computer would have to uh, try to calculate 3D space uh, using only really two dimensions of, uh, of points to track from. Uh, so it is a good idea to, um, to get these tracking points which are further away from uh, or are outside of the plane of this wall. Uh, now, uh, one tracking point that's, um, that's a good one to have is this tracking point. Because it's so far from the camera, uh, it'll give the computer a point to track um, the whole scene uh, as it is on a larger scale. It's the same as sort of uh, picking a point on the horizon uh, in order to sort of um, uh, work out which direction you're facing in. Uh, it uh, it gives it um, uh, it gives it information that's not only on this sort of small scale, which uh, can be sort of rotated around quite easily, but also on this larger scale, uh, which uh, gives it a lot more sort of uh, uh, a lot more sort of fine tuning when it comes to those distances, and so uh, that's a good point to have. Um, same with this point up here to a slightly lesser extent. Uh, now you'll see that this point here, uh, if we travel backwards through the timeline, uh, it actually goes off, uh, comes back on, goes off, comes back on, and goes off again um, during this uh, during the timeline. And you can see it here. Um, we have uh, a begin uh, keyframe and an end keyframe at the end of this point as it's sort of traveling off the screen. Uh, and we have a begin and another begin and then a, uh, probably another end. No, it just sort of goes through to the, uh, to the end of the scene. Uh, now this is fine to do. Um, if a point is traveling uh, in and out of frame, uh, don't uh, hesitate to actually uh, break up the, uh, the tracking like that. And uh, the begin and the end keyframes will just tell the computer not to tr not to attempt to track between these points. Um, but because it's all on track six, um, it will know that this is actually the same point. And so it will try and work out where that point is in space based on how it relates to the other, sp uh, the other points in the scene. Uh, another track that's important to us is uh, this tracking point here, uh, which it's probably a tracking point I wouldn't otherwise pick because if we look at it, and I'll just select it, if we look at it in this magnifier, um, you can see that there isn't a lot of contrast here and it is quite blurry uh, because it's out of focus and there is some motion blur um, with the camera movement. Uh, the reason why I have decided that um, I need to track that anyway is because um, all of our points so far have been raised up from the floor here and I would really like to have the uh, the origin point and the ground plane um, be on this floor here or uh, flush with this sort of this tiled ground that we have here um, and uh, in order to do that uh, with the least amount of tweaking um, I've uh, picked a point which is on that ground so that we can just uh, uh, put the origin point right on that point. Uh, otherwise we'd have to sort of uh, work out in 3D space how far down from these uh, these points the, um, the actual ground plane is. Uh, if you are filming um, and you have uh, a little bit more foresight than I had, uh, bring along a tape measure. Uh, because you'll be able to measure the distance between these two points. If you know that you're going to be tracking these points, um, just measure the distance between these two points because this will help with our coordinate system. And so you can measure this distance, measure this distance, um, even measure the distance from here to here if, um, if you can get a decent measurement off that. And that will come in handy 
um, later on. Uh, the other tracking point that I've got um, uh, is this tracking point here, which is the corner of this bench. And this is a lot better tracking point than the uh, than the bolts that we had in this um, in the back of the bench here. And you can see here, if you look over in the magnifier on the left, um, it really is sort of hard to see any of those bolts there. If we look at this tracking point, uh, you can see that it is sort of um, it's a good contrast between the background and the foreground color, uh, and it does have this corner that we can sort of place the crosshair directly on. Uh, however, it's not our best tracking point because it is so blurry, uh, because it is out of focus. Uh, you can see there that we've uh, we've got the lighting changing, uh, which is because we had the lighting set to automatic or the the uh, exposure level for the camera set to automatic. Uh, if you can set it to manual, please do set it to manual because that will um, that will add some consistency to points, which will make them easier to track but uh, you can see that it is slightly out of focus and that's result resulted in the sorts of yellow areas um, the caution areas in our uh, tracker timeline and uh, in order to combat that you can see that I've ha had to add a couple of these keyframes here um, in order to try and fix up uh, any areas that were uh, really sort of confusing the computer uh, but I still added this point in even though it is not the best tracking point uh, because um, at the start of our scene uh, at the first half of our timeline um, we only really have tracking points which are on this uh, plane or this tracking point which is fairly close to this plane uh, this tracking point is further away uh, which gives us that sort of uh, three-dimensional depth um, and uh, we don't have other tracking points of that type right from the start. Uh, so um, if we didn't have that there, we could have errors at the beginning of our scene or, or at the sort of first half of our scene uh, as it's trying to sort of um, judge this three-dimensional space based only on the information that it has. Now when this uh, tracking point goes off screen, you can see that it's no longer valid. Um, that's when this tracking point comes into effect and we still have this tracker up here uh, and later and just a short while later we have this tracker uh, come in for the first time which means that um, uh, not only do we have a nice distribution of trackers around the scene and in three dimensions but we also have those uh, three-dimensional trackers um, at both the beginning and end of the scene so you can see here we have this tr these tracking points which uh, which end here. If we don't add new tracking points uh, after the uh, the these tracking points end, then of course we have less data, which means that the computer has less information to be able to solve um, uh, solve the three D scene. Which of course would mean that uh, we'd get up to this point and then all of a sudden our camera would start jumping around because it wouldn't know where it is in the three D scene. And if we, uh, if we scroll up, you can see that we have a good distribution of points that uh, go right to the end. We have uh, points that are tracking around the middle. And we also have the trackers which are tracking around the beginning of the scene. And so keep that in mind when you are setting up tracking points like that. Uh, now, when you... Um, uh, I'll just tell you tracking points that you should probably avoid. Um, and these are tracking points which... Uh, you can't avoid if you're using automatic tracking. And uh, one example is um, anything where you're tracking the intersection of an object with, an ob with another object which is a distance behind the first object, uh, which sounds really complicated, but really uh, a good example is uh, right here. Uh, if you look over in this magnifier, when I put the cursor over here, you can see that there is that right angle there. And normally right angles are good, they're great tracking points. Uh, there's good contrast between this background and, and these sorts of foregrounds. And so um, it might seem like this right angle here is a good tracking point. And the automatic tracker uh, will uh, actually take this point and say, yes, this is a good tracking point, I'll track this point. Uh, but um, 
we of course know that it isn't a good tracking point. And the reason for that is that uh, this isn't a fixed point in space. This is actually uh, an intersection between this object in the foreground and this object which is slightly in the background from it. Uh, which means that this point is actually going to be a sliding point. And what I mean by a sliding point is, you can see that that first uh, word there is red and the next word is black. Well, if we move the, um, the, the playhead back, you can see that now, uh, looking over here in, the, in this scene, uh, we're right at the beginning of this first white word and the, the whole of the black word is, is now visible and that right angle is now there above this point in the word. Uh, it's because as this post uh, moves in front of this object, um, that intersection slides along the top of that, uh, that sign uh, there. And in fact, as, we s as the camera moves up and down, uh, this point where it intersects will actually be sliding up and down this, p this pole as well. Um, and so that isn't actually a fixed point in space, but the, uh, the automatic tracker won't know that, uh, which is one of the reasons why I don't like using automatic tracking and one of the, one of the things that you'll have to eliminate if you do use automatic tracking. And uh, in a similar way, um, reflections in windows uh, are quite bad f for this. Uh, if the reflection is um, a fixed point in the middle of the window, then it's essentially the same as tracking a point which is beyond that window, so that would be okay. But uh, sections here where this reflection is uh, meeting the the edge of this window, where it's meeting this sort of um, uh, the frame uh, of this window, well, as we sort of move the timeline backwards and forwards, that point's actually moving as well, but the computer doesn't know that. It just knows that uh, that right angle is almost exactly the same as that right angle there. And so it, it believes that's the same point. So just watch out for those sorts of points and avoid them. Now, um, if you are setting up a scene to, uh, to film, um, you see, I, I just sort of took my camera out and, uh, and took a few um, wandering shots around my university. But uh, if I was setting this up for a very specific shot, uh, say we were actually shooting shooting a scene here with actors sort of walking around, um, I'd probably uh, be a lot more careful in how I selected my scene. And I would also make some preparations. Um, for example, I know that I can track these points here, but we don't have as many tracking points off this, off this plane. So what I'd probably do is bring along a roll of gaffer tape, and I'd just put a few X's on the ground um, uh, in the in the foreground here, and that way we'll be able to track those points, um, uh, the the inside angles of those X's, to in order to track those those points um, throughout the whole scene. Uh, now make sure that you don't sort of uh, vandalize anything, so don't use spray paint or, or uh, use tape on things that it's going to sort of strip varnish or strip paint off of, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, in order to minimize the blur, uh, and this is a good uh, tracker to, uh, to talk about blur, um, in order to minimize that, um, uh, it's a good idea to keep any crucial tracking points um, more or less the same distance from the camera throughout the whole of your shooting. Uh, so rather than uh, be walking into or out of a scene, um, if you've got a if you've got a few tracking points, um, it's a good idea to try and set up your scene so that you're walking around those tracking points, almost sort of uh, uh, revolving around that uh, that sort of central area, and then sort of track. Uh, track those points and they'll stay in focus. Uh, also it's a good idea to keep your shutter speed high if you can set that on your camera. Uh, I was shooting this with uh, a shutter speed of 150 uh, which is higher than normal uh, but it's not too high that it starts to look like one of those sort of action-y zombie movies where people are running and it looks like a strobe effect. Uh, if I had set this to a shutter speed of 50 uh, then it would take um, just a third as much uh, movement to cause the same amount of motion blur as we have here. 
So that's just uh, some things to keep in mind when you're filming.